How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to go over the algorithm problem integer to Roman. This is a medium problem asked at Amazon, Apple, Google, PayPal, Bloomberg, and Adobe. A lot of people don't like this problem because it involves a little bit of math, but you can't deny that this problem is really useful to learn because it's asked at so many different companies. Definitely like and subscribe if you like this type of content. I release coding tutorials every week and without further ado, let's get into the video. So for this problem, we need to take an integer and convert it to a string Roman numeral. So according to the leak code description, the number that we are given in our input will always be between 1 and 3,999. Roman numerals have seven different symbols, I, V, X, L, C, D, and M. Each numeral corresponds to the following values. So if we had the string X, V, X is equal to 10, V is equal to 5, and then we add both of those values together to get 15. So each individual numeral value, we will simply add together to get the total integer value. But there are odd edge cases when it comes to Roman numerals. So for example, if I had the following numeral I, 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 you would think this is equal to four since I is equal to one and we just do one plus one plus one plus one, but this is not the case. Four in Roman numerals is IV because what this is saying is that V is equal to five, I is equal to one, and we are going to subtract them. So we do five minus one equals four. So it's a little weird because we're subtracting the number on the right from the number on the left. Here are some of the other edge cases that we're going to have to consider. Nine is equal to the Roman numeral IX because we do X minus I which is 10 minus one equals nine. Same thing with 40, 90, 400, and 900. We are always subtracting the Roman numeral on the right from the Roman numeral on the left. So in total, here are all of the conversions from Roman numerals to integers, and this is including the edge cases. Now that we have all of the conversions, we can now convert any number between one and 3,999 to Roman numerals. So for example, let's say we wanted to convert the number 2,944. First, we'll create a result to keep track of the Roman numerals, and this will just be a string. The way we're gonna solve this problem is with simple arithmetic, just division and using the modulus operators. So using all of these conversions, we have to loop from the biggest to smallest, starting from M Roman numeral and going down to I Roman numeral. So we're going to start with M, which equals 1000. So if we take the current number, which is 2,944, divided by a thousand, that would equal two. And remember we are dividing by integers, so the result will not be a decimal, it'll be a whole number. This number that we just calculated by doing the division tells us how many of that symbol we will need. So since we have a value of two, that means we would need two M Roman numerals to append to our result. Now that we did that, we just need to chop off the most significant digit from our number. And we can do that using the modulus operator. So if we take our number 2,944 mod 1,000, we would be left with 944. And what this just did is we stripped off the two. We're now done with the numeral M, so we move to the next highest numeral, which is CM. CM is equal to 900. And just like before, we're going to do 944 divided by 900, and that equals one. So this number one is telling us we are going to have a single CM appended to our result. Once again, we're going to use the modulus to chop off the most significant digit. 944 mod 900 is equal to 44. We move to numeral D, which is 500. 44 divided by 500 is zero. That means we do not add any Ds to our result. So we're gonna continue to move through this array until we get to a Roman numeral where the division is not equal to zero. So by the time we get to the Roman numeral XL, which equals 40, we do 44 divided by 40, which equals one. That one corresponds to a single XL Roman numeral. So our result is left with MMCMXL. Once again, we do 44 mod 40 equals four. We move through all of our numerals until we get a division that is not zero. And that would be at the numeral IV, which is equal to four. We do four divided by four, which is equal to one. So we append a single IV to our result. Finally, we do four mod four, which is equal to zero. 
and when our number reaches zero, we know we are done with the conversion. So our final result is MMCMXLIV. Okay, let's implement the code for this solution. We are given an integer num and we need to return a string, which will be the Roman numeral. So to start things off, we need to define all of our numeral pairs. So to do that, we can create a class. So if we come down here, we can say class numeral and we're gonna have two attributes. We're gonna have the symbol and we're gonna have the actual value. And let's create a constructor. So we'll pass in our symbol, pass in our value, and assign them. So we'll say this.symbol equals symbol, and this.value equals value. Now that we've created this class, we can generate all of our pairs. So I've written out all of the numeral pairs. So we have a numeral array and it always starts with the biggest and goes down to the smallest. So that way, when we're implementing this int to Roman function, all we need to do is loop over this numerals array from start to finish. So now that we have all of our conversions readily available, we just need to implement this int to Roman function. So the first thing we wanna do is create a result, and this can just be initialized to an empty string. Then we're going to loop over all of our numerals. So we'll say numeral, numeral, and once we're in here, this is where we need to perform the simple arithmetic, the division and the modulus. So first, let's compute the division to find out how many of that specific Roman numeral we need to add to our result. So to do that, we'll say int number of symbols, and we're going to take our num, and we're going to divide it by numeral dot value. And keep in mind, if number of symbols is equal to zero, we want to completely ignore that Roman numeral because it won't be a part of our conversion. So we're gonna have to do an extra check here. We'll say if number of symbols, if it's not equal to zero, then we add it to our result. So we're gonna say result plus equals. We're gonna take the symbol that we're currently looking at and we're going to repeat it however many times number of symbols is. So number of symbols, and that will get appended to our result. And then when we come out of this if statement, this is where we're going to chop off the most significant digit. So to do that, we'll say num mod equals, and we're gonna say numeral dot value. And then finally, outside of the for loop, we just return our result. So as you can see, not much code to implement, but it does involve a little bit of math. So let's make sure the solution works. So our time complexity is going to be big O of N, where N is the number of Roman numeral characters we have in our result. On line 23, we use the repeat function, which has to generate the number of symbols that we provide to it. So under the hood, the repeat function is actually running in big O of N time, where N is the number that we supply to it. So by the end of our conversion, we will have looped over every single character in order to generate it. And keep in mind, the for loop that we have that loops over all of our numerals does not contribute to our time complexity because the numerals array is always gonna be the same size. So even if our input grows or shrinks, our numerals array is always gonna be the same so it doesn't affect our time complexity. Also, I have seen some people say that this algorithm is running in constant time since our input is restricted, but I would say that you should always define what n should be, and n in this case is the number of characters. And then as for our space complexity, it's constant. We don't initialize any extra memory. The numerals array, once again, does not contribute to our space complexity because it's not gonna grow in size as our input grows. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. If you want to support me further, check out my Patreon. And also thank you to anybody that is subscribing. I'm actually almost at 2,000 subscribers. Have a good one, and until next time.